Numbers chapter number 21, begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And when King Arad, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites. And they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses, Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that when every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon the pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your good grace. Thank you for that good song. Lord, it was a blessing. Lord, I'm glad you're there for us, and you've made promises to us. And God, we're thankful that you just don't bring us to it, you bring us through it. And we bless your holy name. Now, Father, thank you for this number that's come out tonight. I pray you would bless them, help them, protect them, undergird them, and shield them. But while they're here, I pray you'd bless them. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would touch those of our number that are sick, and those of our number that are uh, uh, shut in, those of our number that would desire to be here but could not be here tonight. Lord, I pray you'd help them. Lord, we're thankful for traveling mercies for Brother Tony and Miss Brandy and little Squirt. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, uh, you would certainly sit down amongst us. And God, you'd speak to our hearts and you'd help us. Lord, we know if you don't return throughout the night that we'll face another day tomorrow. We'll face another week. And God, we need your help. We live in a perverse world. We live in a wicked world. We live in a world, just like that psalm says, that despises us, uh, despises what we stand for. Lord, we live in a country now that was a, a country of liberty and freedom, that, Lord, our freedoms and our liberties are being stripped away. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, you would help us through this message tonight to strengthen us and embolden us for what lies ahead uh, now, Father, I do pray again that, Lord, you would touch those of our number who could not be here. Father, help us tonight to set in heavenly places. Bless your people abundantly. We'll thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. Oh, I want to show you a few things as a way of introduction in this chapter. I want you to show you, first of all, the contending in verse number 1. And when the king Arad, the Canaanite, which dwelled in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. We find a battle. We find some contending going on here. And can I say, uh, you're going to face some contention. If you live by this Bible... And if you live by the, the promises of the Word of God and the statutes of God, uh, if you live up to your name as Christian, somebody's not going to like it. Somebody's going to contend with you. Uh, Miss Sidney stopped at uh, uh, Walgreens last night, and the lady that was running the cash register just was railing, just mad, just upset about Christmas. And Sidney said, you don't like the Christmas music? 
She says, the whole thing, this whole myth about Jesus, he didn't, he didn't come, he, 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 you know, he didn't uh, uh, resurrect from the dead, he didn't, uh, all this stuff is, she said, I'm a pagan, and all this stuff is wrong. And Sidney said, Merry Christmas. Huh? You know, she wasn't wearing a neon sign saying, I love Jesus. But that lady's just upset. Can I say the devil crowd's really upset? Any time that the public has to deal with the fact that Jesus came, they don't like it. And when you're on your job and you let people know you went to church, man, they're going to have a cow. You went to church? We got a pandemic going on? You went to church? You were around people? Oh, you're wicked. Uh, listen, they tried to cancel Thanksgiving. I promise you they'll try to cancel Christmas. You're going to face some contending. They were in a battle. Can I say the Christian life is about warfare? We are in a spiritual warfare. We fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. And can I say this? If you don't stand up for the Word of God and the things of God, they'll take more and more of our ground away. Hmm? Can I say? Uh, 20 years ago, it had never been a thought that the government could close down churches. Now it just took the Supreme Court to tell people what we already know. And half of them didn't want to vote for it. I'm telling you, friends, we're in a battle. We see the contending. Now notice the conquest, verse number 3. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and called the name of the place Hormah. Can I help you something? We're on the winning side. Hmm? They utterly destroyed their enemy. Now we're talking about folks that just a few days before this was in Egypt making bricks. Uh, uh, can I help you with something? Uh, uh, Israel was not schooled in warfare. Uh, Israel knew nothing about the battlefield. Uh, 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 but you know what Israel had going for them? God. Uh, and God was for them. And we said it this morning, if God be for us... Uh, who can be against us? Uh, can I help you with something? Uh, 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 some 270 years ago, or however long it was ago, uh, uh, America was formed. Uh, uh, rose bloomed in the wilderness. Uh, uh, but can I help you with something? The Britons, uh, 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 they were the greatest army on the face of the earth. Uh, uh, but yet, uh, uh, some fellas with pitchforks uh, and muskets uh, and axe handles uh, and anything they could grab onto uh, uh, defeated the greatest army on the face of the earth uh, why I say again if God be for us uh, who can be against us our forefathers came here uh, uh, because they wanted a land where they could worship God uh, and God honored it uh, I've got good news uh, if you make a stand for God uh, and if you just make a stand for righteousness uh, God will honor that uh, we find the conquest uh, but then notice the complaining Look at verse number 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. Can I help you with something? Most of the time, shortly after God grants great victory, Folks become dissatisfied and start complaining. How many times have we had a good revival meeting and God really blessed you? But it's not too long after that you're tempted to start complaining about the goodness of God. Hmm? Shortly after that, you start missing church on Wednesday night. Shortly after that, you stop praying. You stop seeking God. Hmm? Can I say they're complaining? They're complaining. I, I, we're talking about folks that were slaves for 400 years. We're talking about folks that weren't allowed to have a, a, a thought that was their own. They were told what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Uh, they were beaten. Uh, uh, they were abused. Uh, they were mistreated. Uh, God sent a deliverer down uh, and delivers them. Uh, and they're upset because God didn't let them stay in Egypt and take over Egypt. You know why a lot of people don't serve God? Because they want the world. Egypt's always a picture of the world. 
God's not interested in this world. This world's going to burn up. God's interested in sinners. I want to save them. And he's interested in his children and victory in their life. He leads them out, leads them through the Red Sea. I'm, I'm sorry, listen to me. I know they were not indwelled by the Holy Ghost. We are. But I want to tell you something. If I've been making bricks all my life and been beaten by Egyptians all my life and God sends a man down, he leads us out, we get all the spoils of Egypt, we get down the Red Sea, Pharaoh's army's coming down on us, looks like we're going down for the last time, God parts the Red Sea, we walk over on dry ground, and then God drowns all of Pharaoh's army. Listen, I'm hanging out with that guy that led me out of there. I'm not complaining about anything after that. But yet here they are. They're complaining. Notice they're complaining they don't have any bread. They're complaining they don't have any water. And then it says they loathe this light bread. You know what that is, don't you? That's the manna. The stuff God rained down from heaven. They loathe it. Mm -mm. Listen, I don't know what they're complaining about. Back when I used to work a secular job, Miss Annette got tired of fixing me lunch. She'll tell you, I ate the same thing every day. She said, what do you want? I want a ham sandwich. What do you want? I want some Grippo chips. What do you want? I want some Swiss rolls. Every day. Well, you want some turkey? I want a ham. You want this? No, I want this. You want to get a microwave there? No, I want this. Every day, I want this. Feed me manna every day from heaven. That'd be all right with me. I like it. Huh? I have a Swiss roll every day of my life. Now, if I can eat a Swiss roll every day, I'm sure if some, God sent something down from heaven, I don't know what it was, but if it came from heaven, it's going to be good. Yeah. Load me up. Huh? Can I tell you what manna wasn't? It wasn't Chinese. <laughs> huh? By the way, all you, all you cat eaters, Corona came from China. Yeah. Yeah. Just telling y'all. Tell Nothing good comes out of China. Just telling you. Huh? That wasn't one, one in the notes. They're complaining. Many times right after God gives a great blessing, we're tempted to complain. Why? The devil wants to steal all the joy and the momentum you got from the victory. Notice, if you will, the chastisement. Look at verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Listen. You know, my mama taught me early on not to question God. I'll never forget. One time I said, well, why does God do this? And she smacked me in the mouth. She said, you don't ever question God. I was little. I hadn't forgot that. My mouth still hurts today. I ain't never forgot that. She said, you don't, you shouldn't smack your child in your mouth. Somebody need to tell that to my mama. You shouldn't, but she did. But I never forgot that. She says, you never question God. I learned I wasn't saved. I was young. I didn't, I, I didn't know. I was just asking a question. I learned real quick, don't ask that question. All right? Well, after I got saved, after I got reading the Bible, I, I read where these folks question God. God sent snakes among them. Listen, I still don't question God. Huh? I don't want no snakes growing up in my house. You listening? That'd be enough right there. Don't question God because he's got some fiery serpents looking for you. Huh? He sends chastisement. He sends a bunch of serpents. Huh? I mean, sends a bunch of serpents among them, and a lot of them died. We've quoted the verse. Uh, if you're without chastisement, you're a bastard, not a son. Hmm? This will help you something. If you sin, and of course we know the Bible says anything that's not a faith is sin. The Bible says for him to know to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We're all clear on that? Therefore, the Bible says, Thou shalt not, you better not. If the Bible says, Thou shalt, you better. It's not real tough. And if you know that God said that let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, if you, you know, speak corrupt things, that's sin. You know, the Bible says that you're to forgive and you don't forgive, that's sin. You know, the Bible says to fornicate is a sin and you fornicate, that's sin. The Bible says that adultery is sin, that's sin. The Bible says that murder is a sin, that's sin. I mean, the Bible is real clear on what sin is. 
and you go ahead and do it, you're going to pay the price. But Brother Eddie, if you live like the devil and commit all that stuff, and God doesn't chastise you, the word's real clear. That means you don't belong to God. He don't chasten the devil's children, Miss Tina. You don't go around spanking the neighbor's kids. You probably feel like it sometimes, but you don't go do that. You just always discipline Caitlin and Bella and Josh. Yeah. He's watching. God bless you, Brother Josh. Hmm. There's chastisement. Hmm. Folks all the time say they're saved and live like the devil, and God never sends judgment their way. One of two things is going on. Either that Bible's a lie, or they're a liar. Hmm? And we sold, told you today, it's impossible for God to lie. We see the chastisement. Uh, notice the confession in verse number 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. What a blessing. You know when God ch chastens his children, the reason he chastens them so they'll get right with him? God sent chastisement. It hit them hard, but what happened? They confessed their sin. They not only said we sinned against God, they confessed how they sinned against God. We've complained against him, we've complained against you, God's man. Please pray that he takes away the sin. Then you find intercessory prayer. Moses prayed for him. We see that. Now, notice the cure. Look at verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that when every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now, my dear friends, we find that God sent a cure. It's an unusual cure. I mean, he didn't send Fauci down there or the CDC or nothing. He said, make a serpent, put it on a pole, tell everybody that looks at it that's been bitten they'll live. Mm -mm. Well, several things. First of all, the serpent was made of brass. Brass is always a picture of judgment. We see the serpent was put on a pole and then it was erected. And then we see they had, everybody that had been bitten had to look to the serpent on the pole. And if they did, they lived. Now can I say this serpent on a pole was a picture of what Jesus did on Calvary. Matter of fact, when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3, Jesus refers to this passage right here. Jesus became our judgment. By the way, we've all been bitten by sin. And uh, uh, Jesus hung on Calvary, the pole, the cross. Uh, and my dear friends, everyone that looks to Jesus by faith, that's what they had to do. They had to look by faith to that serpent. Uh, and everyone that did, they lived. Uh, and every one of us that look uh, unto Jesus uh, and by faith, uh, my dear friends, we'll live and we'll live eternally, eternally uh, because He's the cure for our sin. Uh, and what a wonderful cure it is. Uh, I'm interested tonight in verse number 4. Uh, as I was reading this, verse number 4 stuck out in my mind. Look what the Bible says. And they journeyed from Mount Tor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. Here it is. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. They just won a great victory. They utterly destroyed the Canaanites. You thought that would put some wind in their sails. But as they traveled by, from Hor to, uh, uh, to the Red Sea, uh, and they were walking by the Red Sea, the Bible says they became much discouraged because of the way. I want to preach with God's help on discouraged in the way we preach this morning on journeying with Jesus and boy there's times in this journey we have a time but we also preach there's times in this journey when you'll face some things and can I say in facing things if you're not careful you can get discouraged you can get really really 
discouraged. I'm sure these children that came in tonight expecting to have uh, Bible club, and they found out they're not having Bible club, I'm sure they got a little discouraged. They was looking forward to that, and it didn't work out. It's a good lesson for you. Kids, look at me. Here's a good life lesson. Not everything you set your sights on doing really works out. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Hmm? That doesn't mean Jesus don't love you. Doesn't mean your mom and dad don't love you. Doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. It just works out that way. Hmm? You say, what are you teaching me? I'm teaching you character. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Sometimes, adults, it don't go your way. Hmm? Huh? Isn't it amazing how you'll see something in an ad and say, that's what I want. And you make up your mind, you're going to get it. And you get it. And you get it home. And you open up the box, and it comes with instructions. And there's 87 pieces. And when you get done putting it together, it doesn't look like anything you looked at in that ad you saw. Sometimes it don't go your way. Hmm? Then you've got to call Ray to come fix it. Hmm? That's how we are. Sometimes we get it on our mind that this is going to be wonderful. If I can just get a new house, everything's going to be wonderful. If I can just get a new car, everything's going to be wonderful. If I can just get this, it's going to be wonderful. If I can just, it just doesn't always go your way, friend. And if you're not careful, you can become discouraged in the way. Hmm? Now, I already knew what I was preaching on, so I didn't get discouraged when none of you knew what was on the sign. But if I'd have been in the flesh, I'd think, what's the, what's, why should I do that? I, I work hard and think about what I'm going to put on there. I put something on there, and then people don't even pay attention. Well, the truth of the matter is, I don't put that on there for you. I put that on there for people driving by. Maybe somebody will see it, and God will touch their heart. But you'd think, folks of our stripe, of our church family would come in and say preacher the sign really looks good you know when did we put that up last October yeah man the first few weeks boy the sign looks good preacher I ain't heard that in months now if I was somebody who really cared about hearing about the sign I'd get discouraged hmm I made up my mind this morning I was going to be in a good mood. My phone started going off. Miss Annette's phone started going off of everybody that was sick. I understand some of them are really sick. also understand some of them got a, <coughs> oh, I can't go out. Oh, I got, I got, I got the Fauci blues. Huh? Hmm. But here's the kicker. They'll go to work tomorrow. And they're liable to go to work tomorrow and get a pink slip. Sure. Yep. Putting work above God. Yep. Not saying, I hope that don't happen. But you better be careful. He is a jealous God. Sure. Hmm? But I didn't let that discourage me. You know, I know some are really sick. And I know some are, are scared that they've been exposed to something, so they're going to stay in. Hmm? I got news for you. You've all been exposed to something. It's called sin. You've all been exposed to something. It's that time of year. As I said this morning, there is no more flu. COVID cured the flu. Uh, there's no more common cold. Uh, but I didn't let that discourage me. I'm here to tell you, it's very easy to get discouraged in the way. Let me give you a few things. Can I say this? First of all, discouragement is powerful. It is powerful. Discouragement will control you. It is a strong force. When you get discouraged, you don't see good in anything. It is very, very powerful. Can I say it has a strong pull? And its object is always bring you down and put your mind in a bad, in a bad place. Hmm. It don't take much to be discouraged in this world. Uh, I want to tell you something. If you're a Bengals fan, you live with discouragement for about four decades. Hmm? It's true. Huh? 
They finally get a good quarterback, blows out his knee. And that, that's, that's the Bengal way, huh? Should have saw that coming. You know, what good's it had to do to have a golden arm when you have no line? But see, discouragement's powerful. If you're not careful, you'll let that feed over into your mind all the time, and it'll rob you of all kinds of blessings. Now, say something else about discouragement. Discouragement is prominent. Discouragement affects everyone. I don't care who you are. If you're breathing, you're a candidate for discouragement. It affects everybody. Something can discourage you. Hmm? Listen, I hate to be lied to. You know what's eating at my crawl with all this election? All the fraud. And the media still lying. Still lying. Uh, uh, listen, you can get discouraged. You can get discouraged watching the news. The weatherman will lie to you. Brother Aaron was a, was a great encourager of news after we got done praying. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, whoa, that's exciting. Miss Annette said, I just washed my car. Huh? Isn't that exciting? Huh? It don't take much to discourage you. Hmm? Listen. Discouragement can be brought about through sickness. You get sick, you can be discouraged. There are a lot of folks watching live stream like right now that is hating life because they want to be here. Just ask Clint Ruby. He can tell you about it. It's, 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 hey, you're thankful you can watch it, but you miss being here. And then there's just something about it. You know that you want to be here and you desire to be here, especially if you don't feel sick uh, and you want to be here. But sickness can bring discouragement. Those things you want to do, you can't do because you're sick. And I thought about this. Stress brings discouragement. Huh? You get stressed out, you want everything to go well, and then it don't go well. Hmm? Bring back the movie Christmas Vacation. Clark just wanted to have a good family fun Christmas. And he burnt down the whole block. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, well, you can get stressed out and it will discourage you to no end. You know, his wife tells him now, do I have to remind Nope, nope, you don't have to remind me. It was my ideal. Hmm? He brings discouragement, stress. It'll, it'll discourage you to no end. Can I say this? Sorrow brings discouragement. Hmm? It, it's hard to be happy, happy, happy when your heart's broken. Can I say this? Struggles will bring discouragement. It's hard to be excited when you can't pay your bills. That's what happened to these folks in the wilderness. They were struggling. They were glad they weren't in the, in the brick pit no more, but not knowing where they're going to bunker down, not knowing where the next meal's going to come from, not knowing how long they're going to be in the wilderness. Those struggles caused them to get discouraged. And I say this? Lack of sleep can cause you to get discouraged. Hmm? The Bible says there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And we know there's an eternal rest, but He's given us rest right now. He's given us peace regardless of what we face. But when you don't rest your body, your body will start playing tricks on you. Hmm? Matter of fact, you need to wash your hands. You need to take vitamin C, and you need to get plenty of rest, drink plenty of liquids. It'll help your body. If you don't, you're liable to get sick. And I say this, uh, solidarity will cause you to get discouraged, being alone. Now, I know there are some people who are hermits. They say they are. But God made us. And He made us to where we have to have other people in our life. We have to have conversation. We have to have fellowship. He made us that way. And Chief will tell you he's a hermit, but if you call him, he'll talk your arm off. You know why? Because he loves people. We're all that way. And when you're alone, it'll discourage you. Now, I've never seen that show, but there's a show on called Alone where they take people out, drop them off in the middle of nowhere, and they tell them that whoever stays out here the longest gets a million dollars. And then people go crazy. Because you're so used to being with people that when you're not with people... Why do you think one of the worst forms of imprisonment is something called solitary confinement? Hmm? There are people who go crazy. When you're alone, you can get discouraged. I thought about that. Your surroundings can discourage you. Hmm? 
Uh, if you're in an environment that is not clean and you are a person who is very clean, you'll get discouraged being around a bunch of filth. If you're in an environment where everybody around you is foul mouth, that will discourage you. If you're in an environment where everybody is negative, that will discourage you. Your surroundings can bring discouragement. Then I thought about this. The seasons can bring discouragement. I've, I told Miss Ned to pull one out of the driveway. I said, I hate this time of year. I hate it getting dark so early. I just do. Thank God my neighborhood's got a bunch of Christmas lights. It just still looks like it's daylight in my neighborhood right about now. Huh? But there's just something about weather changes and the seasons and it getting cold and you getting old like me and your bones start hurting when it gets cold and all that kind of stuff. The season change, it can discourage you. You know this time of year, when it should be the happiest time of year. Yes. really should. We just had a feast this past Thursday and we're headed to getting gifts. I mean, it's that time of year. I mean... It, you got several stations out, 24 hours a day, playing Christmas music. You go into stores. If you can go into a store, there's Christmas music. I mean, you know, uh, uh, instead of uh, Santa ringing a bell out to get you change, I got somebody handing you a mask now. But other than that, it's a good time of year. But you know, this time of year, there are more suicides than any other time of year because people are alone, because people get depressed, because people... Can't get their kids the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Whatever it is, they get discouraged, they get depressed, they take their own lives. You see, discouragement's prominent. It's all around us. And it don't take much. Drive down the highway, you can get real discouraged when you get on 75. And it isn't going nowhere. I don't know about you, there's nothing worse than sitting in traffic. Well, there is something worse. There's something worse. There's something worse. There's something worse when you sit in traffic and it's not moving and you've got to go to the bathroom. That's worse. Can I tell you a story? Y'all so good to come out on this night and face the corona. Y'all know Brother Mike Goodson. And this was 20 years ago. Brother Mike and I are going to Florida. We're going to down there to a meeting. And I drove to Knoxville, met with him. We hopped in his car. We head off to Florida. And we'd been somewhere, and we'd, we'd got a sandwich and drank a big old Coke and everything. Get out on the expressway. We don't get five miles down the road, and it's a standstill. There's an accident. Somebody had to die because traffic didn't move for hours. Well, you know, Mike's a cut-up. Well, he's telling all these jokes and everything. Well, we get tickled with him. We've got to go to the bathroom. We're at a spot in the highway where it's flat and there isn't a tree within 20 miles. You ain't getting out of the car and going to the bathroom. This is a true story. I'm telling it in church. It's a true story. We're sitting there about to die. Our eyeballs have turned yellow. We're about to die. And the car in front of us, the doors open up. The fella gets out and he's got a dog. And he takes the dog out to meet him. And the dog does his business. Brother Mike looks at me and says, I wish I was a dog. It's over. Fortunately, about 45 minutes after that, traffic opened up and we hit the first exit, and there was a long line at the gas station to get in there. But, you know, you can get real discouraged if you're not careful. Sitting in traffic, watching a dog do what you wish you could do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, discouragement's powerful, it's prominent. But discouragement is also problematic. It's contagious. If you're not careful, your discouragement will affect somebody else. And their discouragement will affect somebody else. Matter of fact, it's more contagious than coronavirus. Hmm? It's very problematic. I don't believe just one person was complaining about God or Moses. In order for God to send that much judgment, they were all discouraged. Amen. They all started running their mouth. And my dear friends, God sent judgment. It's very problematic. Uh, the Bible says that, you know, that it's very difficult when you live with a, uh, a contentious woman. In other words, if somebody is always negative all the time, that's going to bring you down all the time. 
Hmm? It's problematic when you're around somebody. It's always negative. Always discouraged. Nothing ever good happens to them. We used to have people in the church, no matter what. Beautiful, 75 degrees, sun shining. Boy, it's a beautiful day. They'd find something negative to say about it. Huh? No matter what, always. I got to where I'd avoid them. Go shake their hand before, before they could say anything. I, I was gone. Never did I ever ask them how they was doing. They would tell me. Then I'd be discouraged. Huh? Because that's what discouragement does. It breeds. And it causes others to feed on it. And it grows and it grows and it grows. Can I say... It is a common thing that the church takes on the personality of the pastor. You get a pastor that's always negative, a pastor that's always down, a pastor that is always uh, 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 just complaining and murmuring. What do you think the congregation is going to be? But you get a church where the pastor is trying to do something for God, and he's encouraged by God, and he's trying to encourage others, and guess what? They'll start encouraging others. Well, that discouragement thing, it's a strong, powerful force. And it is problematic. Can I say this about discouragement? It will pollute. Discouragement pollutes. It polluted Israel. So much that they had snakes growing. I don't care. If you're discouraged, we're voting you out of church. We don't want snakes in the church, okay? Mm -mm, not snakes. Mm? Listen. It'll corrupt your praying. Yeah. It corrupts things. Pollution does. In Jonah, you find Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, But it displeased Jonah exceeding, exceedingly, and he was very angry. Why? Because God sent revival to Nineveh. Verse 2 says, And he prayed unto the Lord. Now he's praying. He's talking to God. And he said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. He said, God, I didn't want to go down there because you're gracious, you're merciful. He's praying, he's talking to God, he's complaining to God for how good God is. And then he says this, Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Tell me, he's not discouraged. He's so discouraged, God had a big gourd grow over his head. Why? Why was he discouraged? Because people he hated got right with God. And he started praying for God to kill him because he didn't want to see them blessed by God. You see, discouragement will corrupt your praying. It's, it'll pollute you. Can I say this? It'll corrupt your thinking. In Matthew chapter 11, verse number 2, John the Baptist is in prison. The Bible says, Now when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. He said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John's in prison. He's discouraged. I mean, John was the one that came preaching, uh, dressed in camel's hair and preaching, uh, repent, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Uh, he's the one that said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, everybody knew who John was. Uh, but now John's in prison because he told Herod that Herod had taken uh, 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 the wrong wife and uh, Herod didn't like it. He's in prison. Uh, and while he's there, he's discouraged. And he sends two of his disciples to Jesus and said, Are you him or should we look for another? This is the same one when he was in the womb. And Mary told his mother that the Lord had visited her and she was with child of the Holy Ghost. He leaped in the womb. From the womb he knew Jesus was the Son of God. Every family reunion he knew Jesus was the Son of God. He's the one that proclaimed Jesus was the Lamb of God. He knew that Jesus was the one. But now he's got discouraged and it's polluted his thinking. You know why some Christians do things you'd never think a Christian would do? Because their thinking got polluted because they got discouraged. And I say this, it'll pollute or corrupt your behavior. In Numbers chapter number 20, the Bible says, And Moses lifted up his hand 
And with his rod he smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Uh, and the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, uh, Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I had given them. Just the chapter earlier. This same murmuring, complaining crowd discouraged Moses so much that he smote the rock out of the will of God and it cost him not getting to go into Canaan land. Discouragement will corrupt your behavior. Moses knew better, but he did it anyway because he was discouraged. Can I say this? Discouragement will affect your vision. Down in Numbers 13, verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. You know the story. Joshua and Caleb said, We can, we can take it. Yeah, there, there's giants in the land, but hey, God's for us. We can take it. He's promised us. Let's go get this land. And the other men said, Whoa, these people are stronger than we are. See, it affected their vision. They didn't see God. They saw the giants. Mm, discouragement will cause you to see every molehill turn into a mountain because you take your eyes off of Jesus. Can I say this? It'll affect your attitude. It'll corrupt your attitude. Look at verse 5. They just had victory. And the people spake against God and against Moses. It affected their attitude. God got them out of Egypt. Now they're complaining. Moses was God's man that got them out of Egypt. Done many miracles through Moses. And now they're complaining. See, discouragement pollutes. But I've got good news. Discouragement has a prescription. You know, some of y'all got this cough. If, if you go get you some, some Mucinex DM, it'll help with your runny nose and that drainage will quit going down your throat and you'll quit coughing as much. Hmm? Uh, um, some of you take take, you know, and go over there to Merrill Norman and get something that make your face look better. Thank you. Somebody got that. There is a remedy for a lot of things. But if you don't take it, it ain't going to help you. Hmm? Well, there is a remedy for discouragement. There's a prescription from the Scriptures that help you with your discouragement. It's found in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Isn't it amazing? Every time a congregation gets tore up, they want to take it out on God's man. Listen to what else happens. Uh, the soul of all people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. Here's, here's your remedy. But David encouraged himself, and the Lord is God. Here's the remedy for discouragement. It's called encouragement. Encourage yourself in the Lord. The old hymn writer wrote this song, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. You know what a remedy your discouragement? Get you out a pad of paper and just start writing down all the blessings of God. How God's blessed you. Write about the day He saved you. Write about the day you answered that prayer. Write about how he blessed you here and how he blessed you. I promise you, before you get to number 10, you'll, be, you'll, you'll not be discouraged anymore. You'll be encouraged. You know why you get discouraged? You start looking around at others. But when you start looking to God, you'll find encouragement. David, when the, in the midst of them trying to stone him, he, he's distressed out of his mind. He's lost his wives. Uh, he's lost his children. Uh, their city's been burned. Uh, 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 they seem to forget that David's hurting too. Uh, they want to stone him. Uh, and David uh, finds him some little corner of that land. Uh, and he starts uh, singing some of them psalms he wrote. Uh, and he starts uh, uh, praising the Lord. Uh, and he starts uh, uh, thinking about how good God's been to him. Uh, how God reached way down in that lower pit uh, and pulled him out and set him on a rock, uh, put praise in his mouth uh, unto God, uh, established his goings. Uh, he starts thinking about the goodness of God, starts singing to God. Uh, all of a sudden, the stress is rolled away. Uh, all of a sudden, the discouragement's gone. Uh, and he's encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, and the Lord said, David, go get him. 
He looked at the boys and said, Why y'all sitting around here? God said, Let's go get our wives and our kids back. And they did. They recovered all. Can I help you? When you get discouraged, the key to getting out of it is encouraging yourself in the Lord. Isaiah 61 3, there's a garment of praise for the spirit of spirit of heaviness. Just find you an old song, start singing it. Sing Amazing Grace. Sing a Rock of Ages cleft for me. Sing, there is a fountain filled with blood. Uh, sing, I know my name is there. Uh, uh, sing, I'm going to lay my Isaac down. Find you a song that lifts up Jesus in your soul uh, and start singing it to the praise and honor and glory of God. I've not been discouraged, but I, I've been singing for a week the matchless grace of Jesus. I love that old song. I've, just a, <laughs> I've been humming that. Uh it's kept me from getting discouraged. Because uh, there is the matchless grace of Jesus. You can't do any better than that. And I'm just trying to help you tonight. Discouragement's everywhere. You're going to get discouraged. Some of you all looking for PlayStation 5 for your kids and your grandkids. Been sold out for months. Been back ordered, all that stuff. And you're stressed out. You're like that movie Jingle All the Way. You're looking for that uh, 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 whatever Ultraman doll he was looking for. You're looking for that one gift and you can't get You're going to get discouraged because you're going to come to church. And somebody's going to say, yeah, I got three of them. Huh? That's what you're going to do. If you're still caught up and that this season is finding the perfect gift, you've missed the mark. The perfect gift was already given. Read the sign on your way out. It'll help you. But friend, you it's easy to get discouraged. You don't have to look very far. But I challenge you. When you feel your spirit getting bogged down, encourage yourself in the Lord. Because just as discouragement is contagious, so is encouragement. If you're good to people, if you smile at people, if you're kind to people, guess what? They'll smile. They'll get feeling better. Huh? You see, misery loves company, but happiness brings joy. And when you're happy, you can bring happiness to somebody else. They might bring happiness to somebody else. It's contagious, friends. Huh? So many people want to waller in their misery. That's a bad place to be. I don't want to be there. I want to be encouraged in the good things of God. You know why I come to church? I come to church looking for God to do something. I come to church looking for somebody to get some help. You know why I study? So somebody gets some help. I could have very easily realized that I studied and I read and I looked at things all week long and then I start getting my phone blowing up, people can't come to church. I could have very easily got discouraged. Why did I put in all that effort if nobody's coming? I could have very easily sent out a message and said, everybody's sick, let's stay home today. But then I went and got some help because I got help today. I got help in folks singing. I got help in fellowship. I've got help in the scriptures even while I was preaching. God has showed me some things and I've got some help. Why would I let the goodness of God go by the wayside so my feelings could be pampered? Hmm? I don't want to live in discouragement. I want to live in the goodness of God. And friend, if you live there, you're not easily discouraged. Hmm? What's sad is nobody stood up with this crowd and said, well, wait a second. Praise God, we're not making bricks today. Praise God, we got those folks back that they took captive and we utterly destroyed the Canaanites. Bless the Lord. No, they all murmured. And if you're not careful, you'll get caught up complaining too. God help us to be encouraged. I hope you get encouraged tonight in the things of God. And I hope tomorrow when it starts snowing, because Aaron said it's going to snow. And I promise you, if it don't snow, he's going to hear about it. Because I'm going to get my snowblower out of the shed and I'm putting it in the garage because I'm going to need it tomorrow. Huh? But listen. Why live in that? When things just choose to be encouraged. 
when it starts snowing tomorrow, say, you know what? Bless the Lord. He makes the snow like he makes the sunshine. And there's nothing prettier than when the trees turn, they're just covered with icicles. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? That's not beautiful driving on the road like that, but it's beautiful to look at. That's a wonder of God. Huh? And you know what? Here's how you can encourage. When the snow is on, watch how there'll be a little finch or a little sparrow fly around, and God directs it right to where it can find something to eat when there's middle snow. And God's feeding that sparrow or that finch in the midst of a snowstorm. God just takes care of his creation. Hmm? And you know what? Without good snow, we won't have pretty grass in the spring. You've got to look at it in the right way. You've got to be encouraged this week. When you're working next to negative Nelly on the job, say, well, praise the Lord. God's good anyway. That'll shut them up. That's all you got to do. Say, well, praise the Lord. He's been good to me. They'll shut up, I promise you. And you'll be encouraged. Huh? Choose the path of encouragement. Don't walk that long, gruesome path of discouragement. Discouragement's all around you. But it don't have to affect you. Why don't you infect, uh, affect discouragement? Light dispels darkness. Shine the light. It'll dispel the darkness. All right, let's all stand, brother. Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord you're not discouraged tonight. Maybe you need to thank the Lord you wasn't sick and you was able to come to church tonight. Maybe you just want to tell the Lord you love Him tonight. Maybe you came in tonight you was a little discouraged. You can come in the altar and say, God, help me. I don't want to be discouraged. And he might give you a song that you can hum and sing that will lift you out of your discouragement. I don't know, but I do know this. He's great and greatly to be praised. They're picking out songs. Some have come. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I'm glad we don't have to live in discouragement. Oh, we have to live around it, but we don't have to live in it. We can be encouraged in the good things of God. You gave me all these precious promises so I can look in them and find encouragement. Lord, you gave us a book of psalms that will uplift our spirits. God, we're thankful for that. Lord, help us when discouragement starts creeping in on us that we would recognize it for what it is and we'd start praising the Lord and watch the discouragement dissipate. Now, Father, bless your people. Help no one here to get sick. And God, do touch them and help them and encourage them in the good things of God. Well, thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.